Hey guys, Pogo here, and today I'm going to teach you how to read and write binary. We all probably know what binary is. It's all those ones and zeros that computers use at a basic level to store data and do math and other operations. But how could this binary really work, and how can you read it? That's what we're going to explore today. But before we talk about the binary system, let's talk about our own number system. Throughout the video, if I say, if I call the number system a language by accident, just know that I'm talking about our number system. I might accidentally call it a language. But the digits that we have in our number system are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. These are all of the digits that we have to work with, basically. Um, if we want to write the number 10, we would write 10 as a 1 and then a 0. We don't have a special symbol like an asterisk that does not resemble a 10, or that does not mean a 10. So these are the digits that we have. We have these 10 digits, uh, and anything on from there is a combination of these digits. So let's take a look at a sample number in our number system. Let's say that we're working with the number 11. Why is this number 11? Why isn't it 1, 1, or even 2 if it's two ones and you want to add it together? Well, when we write a number like this, what we're basically saying is we have two different parts right here. We have the ones place, and we have the tens place. So this first one is in the ones place and the second one is in the tens place. So what this means is anything in the ones place is worth one. So we can go ahead and multiply it by one to get its value. But anything in the tens place is actually worth ten. So even though we see the number one there, we can multiply it by ten to get its true value because it's in the tens place. Likewise if we had 111 uh, and we had a one in the hundreds place, that 1 is worth 100 instead of 1 because of the place that it's in. So if we want to solve this, 10 times 1 is 10, and 1 times 1 is 10, or 1 times 1 is 1, sorry, and 10 plus 1 is equal to 11. So we can easily get our answer back. But let's take a look at numbers in binary. The only digits that we have are 1s and zeros. There's no such thing as a 2 or a 3 or 4 or 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. None of these exist in binary. So let's say that we want to write the number 1. We could simply write 1. That's a valid digit. Uh, let's say we want to do 0. We could write 0. But let's say that we want to express the number 2. How exactly do we do this? I can't just write the number 2 because that's not a valid digit. So how do I go about doing this? Well, let's think about what we just did before. In the other lang er, in our number system that we use regularly, it's in base 10, which means that we go by the tens places in order to move the decimal place. So we have the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, and dot dot dot. Thousands place, ten thousands, a hundred thousand, and so on and so forth. We have all of these different number number places, and they are all multiples of 10, except obviously for 1, but that's where we start. So they're all multiples of 10. That's why it is called base 10. Binary is a base 2 system because it only has two digits in it. Like our number system has 10, 0 through 9. Uh, we only have two, which are 1 and 0 in binary. So how does this work? Uh, again, we, if we want to represent the number 1, we could just write 1, so we have a 1's place. If I wanted to do 0, I could put a 0 in the 1's place. If I wanted to do 1, I could put a 1 in the 1's place. Uh, but let's say that we want to represent the number 2. How exactly do we do this? I can't say that I have two 1's because that doesn't work. I can't write the number 2 in binary. It doesn't exist. So what I have to do is I have to make the 2's place. 
So I can put the number 1 bubble in the 2's place, and that means that it is worth 2. Just like a number in the 10's place is worth 10, a number in the 2's place is worth 2. After that, let's say I want to do the number 3. I could put a 1 in the 1's place and a 1 in the 2's place, which would be 3. But if I want to do the number 4, I can't have two 4's or four ones or 1, 2, and 2 1's, because I can't write any numbers other than 0 and 1. So therefore, I need to have a 4's place. I can write 5, fine, I can do 1, 4, and 1, 1. 6, I could do as well, that would be 1, 4, and 1, 2. Uh, 7 would be a 1, 4, 1, 2, and 1, 1. But the number 8, uh, the number 8 would be 4 twos, or sorry, 2 twos, which I obviously can't do, and none of the other ones will work. So therefore, I need to have an 8's place. So you're starting to see a pattern. All of these are divisible by 2, so they're in base 2. And the pattern will continue 2, 4, uh, 8, 16. So we're basically multiplying by 2, whereas in the other one we're multiplying by 10. So if you want to know the next number place, then you need to multiply by 2 from whatever you currently have. So after 16, it would be 32, because 16 times 2 is 32. So we could represent 31 by using 16s, 8s, 4s, 2s, and 1s. But once we get to 32, we can't represent it without using the number 2 or more. So we need to make it its own place. So that is the base 2 system versus our usual base 10 system that we're used to. So let's try to write a number in binary. Let's say we would have the number 23 in our system. We know that the 3 is in the 1's place. I'm going to make that sure that's a clear divider. So the 3 is in the 1's place, and the 2 is in the 10's place. Uh, but now we need to represent it in binary, and obviously both 2 and 3 are not going to work. So we're going to make a little table here. We're going to have the 1's place, then the 2's place, 4's, 8's, 16's, and that should be enough for us. And we're just going to basically write this number. So first of all, um, how many is 23 can go into 16? So let's say that we have 1 16. Uh, and if we have 1 16, then we still have 7 that we haven't accounted for. 23 minus 16 is 7, if I'm doing my math right. Yes, I believe I am. Uh, so we have 7 left. If we go to the 8's place, we only have 7 left, so we can't, you know, use an 8 here. That wouldn't work. So we're going to have 0 8's. Then if we go to the 4's place, we, can, we have 1 4. So at this point, we have 1 16 and 1 4, which is 20. So we have 3 left. We can make that with 1 2 and 1 1. So the binary representation of 23 is 1 0 1 1 1. That's how you write the number 23 in binary. And if you want to figure out how to solve it, well, let's do that. So we have 1 0 1 1 1. So we can divide this up into the different sections. And this is 1 times 1. This section is 1 times 2 place. This is in the 4's place. This is in the 8's place. And this is in the 16's place. So we have 16, 1 times 16, plus 1 times 4, plus 1 times 2, plus 1 times 1, for a grand total of 16 plus 4 is 20, 22, 23, which is obviously the answer that we just got a minute ago. So that's how you can go from base 10 system to base 2 system, and then back from base 2 system binary to our base 10 system, which is, you know, what we're used to. So that's dealing with numbers, uh, but you can also do this with letters. Now, how exactly does that work? So let's go take a look over here, sorry about that, at... First of all, I'll just quickly show you, this is a nice um, website. I will put a link down to it in the description, and you can use this to test yourself. So for example, let's say that we want to convert, the decimal number to convert is 23, and we want to convert it to binary. 
you'll see it gives us 10111, which is what we just did, so we know we did it right. And if you click Explain Answer, it'll tell you exactly what I just did. There's 116, 14, 12, and 11, so when you add that together, you get 23, and the answer is 10111. And again, excuse me, if I were to place that into the binary part, it would convert it back to 23. And if we want to know the answer, we know that this number represents 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, so therefore it's 23. We have 116, 148, 1412, and 11. So therefore the answer is 23. So that's just a useful resource if you want to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. But now let's say that we want to actually start writing. You're going to want to have open an ASCII table like this one. This table basically contains the decimal numbers or, you know, the regular base 10, our regular numbers, and then the character representation of them. So for example, let's say we want to do the letter A. The number 65 corresponds to the letter capital A, and the decimal or our number 97 corresponds to the character of lowercase a, and this is how the computer will work. So if we want to take the letter A and we want to convert it into binary, we need to know that the decimal form or our form of A is 97, and then we need to go about converting 97 into our binary. So let's do that right now. We're going to figure out what lowercase a is in our uh, in binary. So we know that, if I check really quickly, 97 is a. And we want to go ahead and convert 97 over into binary. So let's set up our table. And this is going to be somewhat of a bigger table. Uh, it's going to go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. So this is a little bit crowded. This is supposed to be 32. This is supposed to be 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. So I'm sorry that that's very crowded. Um, don't worry about it. So the first thing that we're going to do <clears throat> is we do have a 64th place because um, you know, 97, you can subtract 64 and still remain positive. So uh, the number after 64 would be 128. We obviously can't do that, so our first place is going to be 64. And we have 164. And to continue, we want to do 97 minus 64, which would be 33, if I'm doing my math correctly. And this is actually going to be a really easy number to write out now that we see this. So 33 is what we have remaining. We can, we have 132, which leaves us with 1. So that's going to make it very easy. That, therefore, we have 0 16s, 0 8s, 0 4s, 0 2s, and 1 1. So the number 97 in binary, or 97 in base 10 system, is equal to 1100001 in our um, number system. So let's go back over here and try this. ASCII text to binary value. This is another nice little website. I can type in uh, a letter or a word and it will give me back the binary value. So let's go ahead and type in the lowercase a and if we convert it we get 0110001. Now the zero in front of it, if you uncheck padding, that zero should go away. Maybe it won't. Okay. Basically, that zero just means that there are no 128s, and I guess it's important to include that, um, but I didn't. But if you look at and compare our answer, it is 164, 132, and 11, and all these other values are zero. So we can check our work here and see that we got the correct answer. So the important thing to notice is let's say that we want to write the word hello. If I go to convert it, you'll see that it gives us this long, you know, list of numbers. So where exactly do we split it? Well, if we look at this information up here, it says you can get, um, you can convert up to 128 ASCII text to character, to binary characters. 
So if we think about 128, we have the 1's place, the 2's place, the 4's place, the 8's place, 16, 32, 64, 128. And that is the 8th place, which means that for every 8 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that is going to be the H. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is going to be the next one. We, that's the next one. So these are the letters. That's hello um, with the letters, and there are spaces. But if you see it as one long string, then you know that you split at every eighth, at every eighth uh, number, which is why it's important to have that zero, which I didn't have, but I should have. And if you notice, you can see that the L's, both of the L's, have the same value. And if we wanted to, we could convert the 01101100 back into ASCII. And if we look at the table, that should give us 108. I'm not going to do it because I've shown a lot of examples. But if you want to check yourself, um, that's how. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We learned about uh, the binary system, the base 2 system, and how it relates to our number system, but how it differs. We worked on converting numbers from our number system to binary, and then from binary back into our number system. And finally, finally we looked at how to write words in binary. So uh, whenever you see a word in binary, you can basically each letter is represented by eight numbers, and if you convert it back into decimal form, you can get the ASCII code, and from there you can get the letter. So it's a bit tedious, but that is how it works. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a unique video to make, because I haven't done too many non-programming things, but I think that this is also relevant because it's very much related to uh, computers. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, and what you thought of this video. Um, and if you like this video, please click the like button. I'll see you guys soon with some more uh, coding and computer stuff in general. Uh, thanks, and bye for now.